My coverage of Computex 2017 is brought to you by MSI, EVGA, Tesoro, G-Skill, and Cooler Master. Guys, EVGA invited us over to their headquarters in New Taipei City. So we're actually here right now in their gaming arena. This is a, this is, they've set this up just so they can, they can bring people in, have like LAN parties here. And it's actually pretty epic. They've got like a whole stage set up and they can have competitions and that's all pretty sweet. But we're actually not here to check the gaming arena out. We're here to check out EVGA's new products. So guys, EVGA has conveniently laid all of the products out here on these tables for us. So I'm going to kind of run down the line and show you guys what's going on. Ignore Kyle over there. He's, he's, he's not covering any of this stuff. He's just pretending. Anyway, let's start with cases. Uh, the DG7 series includes the DG73, 75, and 76. You guys might be familiar with some of these. Tempered glass available options uh, on multiple sides, up to three sides of the case, uh, and a bit more of a sort of standard box-like aesthetic um, than you get with, uh, for instance, the DG8 series, like the one down there on the left. Uh, these look pretty nice, though. I think they're a pretty good solution. And more on EVGA solutions again in just a minute, because that's what they're trying to focus on this time around. It's not just being a components vendor, but also being able to provide the complete solution for people who want a gaming PC or otherwise. Here's a uh, keyboard that they're working on, Z10. There it is right there, mechanical switches. Nice volume uh, and, and dimmer uh, options here, as well as a LED readout, it looks like, there in the middle. I don't have very much information on this keyboard, but uh, I wanted to at least point it out. Let's move over, over to this laptop. This is the SC17. And a uh, huge thank you, of course, to EVGA, not just for sponsoring my Computex 2017 content, but also I reached out to them to see if we could borrow one of these, and we are. And my editor, Joe, is editing on this right now. Uh, probably as I speak. Uh, it's a beast of a laptop, 17.3 inch screen, 4K uh, G-Sync display, so what it's got on there, GTX 1070 inside, as well as a 6820 CPU. Uh, and the one we have has absolutely been wonderful so far, 256 gig SSD and a one terabyte hard drive in there, aluminum construction, just a beast of a, of a, of a laptop. I also want to point out it came with very minimal bloatware which uh, I certainly appreciated. Here's a new one though, the SC15, a smaller variant of the SC17, probably gonna be a little bit more affordable, I have to imagine, because the uh, uh, specs aren't quite as high end, but you do get a 15.6 6 inch IPS display. It's 1080p and again, G-Sync capable. Uh, has USB 3.1, Bluetooth 4.2, and i7 7700HQ, 16 gigs of RAM, a GTX 1060, Full GPU in there, although it's probably not going to be running at the same frequencies of the, as the desktop top cards. Again, 256 gig SSD and one terabyte hard drive, uh, and with the, that all aluminum construction, uh, EVGA has done a really good job on this. They had a blown up sort of a version of it upstairs. We were able to look at the internals and stuff like that. Simple, clean design, and I definitely like it. If it's anything like the SC17, it's Big Brother. Uh, this is going to be a very nice laptop for someone who needs something on the go. Here is the DG87. It's a big old case. Let's move on down the line though. Here's a DG77 gaming system and uh, again going back to EVGA's solutions. Now taking a look at this DG77 gaming system reminds me that EVGA also in their push to be more of a solutions provider rather than just components, they're introducing a configurator. So this uh, could be integrated with uh, retailers for example like Newegg or something like that. I believe EVGA is also going to just have this hosted directly on their website. But it's basically will allow you to configure a system. I would imagine using EVGA components of course, make sure everything is compatible since you can now get just about everything you would want for a desktop computer all from EVGA. Power supply, case, graphics card, motherboard, CPU cooler. I mean, all you're really missing is what, like some storage, memory, and a CPU, and uh, you can do everything else EVGA if you want, so super convenient. Check out the EVGA configurator if you want to configurate something. EVGA launched these CLC coolers uh, just after CES this year, so I've already kind of taken a look at these. Uh, just, just, just to point out in case you weren't aware, you got a 280mm, 240mm, and 120mm closed-loop cooling solution for CPUs. Uh, they also had some expandable versions of these back at, uh, at CES, those were kind of interesting. But uh, check out Jay's video on these, he has reviewed them, he did a great job. Play, we're playing dueling, dueling make EVGA videos with Kyle. We meet again. <laughs> all right, let's talk power supplies. I recommend EVGA power supplies all the time because they're just good power supplies. Go to good tech, uh, power supply review sites like Johnny Guru and Tech Power Up. They consistently give uh, the vast majority of EVGA power supplies really good ratings for their internals, their build quality. They work with uh, good OEMs like Superflower to put them together. And they uh, are not only well put together, but they're quiet and they have cables that are mostly, usually, all black and uh, blend in with your system a little bit better. 
Here's sort of a new one they're working on. This is the 750G3S. This is an 80 plus gold rated power supply as part of their Supernova seri series. And you might notice that it's a decent size smaller uh, than any of these other full size ATX power supplies that we have around here. It is not an SFX power supply though. SFX is a small form factor standard. This is not quite small enough to fit that. However, they said they're gonna have this available in up to a thousand watts. So it's gonna be the, the pretty much the smallest thousand watt 80 plus gold rated power supply that you can get. And of course, it's got all the features you'd expect from the Supernova, Supernova series, like nice quiet fan, completely modular on the other side. I would have to imagine all the cables are gonna be the, the standard black cables like they use. It's even got an eco mode switch. I believe that's an eco mode switch on that side. So if you're gonna build a small form factor system or a mini ITX system, and especially if you're considering water cooling or something like that, and just space is an issue, uh, check it out, the 750G3S from EVGA. I have to imagine the S stands for small. All right, now let's move on to these guys over here because I think you guys are probably most interested and excited about the X299 products that we have. Of course, going along with uh, Intel's recently announced uh, X uh, Core X series of CPUs going all the way up to 18 core 36 thread options. So uh, EVGA is starting off with their X299 Dark. This is going to be their flagship motherboard. You might notice that it only has four DIMM slots. That was an active choice because they want to make sure that this motherboard is going to uh, have the capability to break overclocking records and doing a quad channel uh, four DIMM slot option rather than an eight DIMM slot option allows them to hit two to 300 megahertz faster speeds uh, when they're attempting memory overclocks with DDR4, uh, simply due to less complexity and less crosstalk between the channels. Beyond that though, uh, this board has a very unique uh, EATX design, but it's EATX with little little pockets cut out of it, so uh, you can still fit it in a standard ATX um, a case, at least in some situations, and you will still be able to route uh, your cables for your 24-pin uh, and your USB and everything through your uh, motherboard routing channels like you should. Also down on the bottom left, they have a PCI Express graphics uh, supplemental connector. This will provide some additional power to the, P the PCI Express slots, especially if you're running a bunch of different devices in different slots. And again, this one they've reset, recessed with that notch cutout. That's for uh, power supply uh, compatibility, because a lot of uh, cases, that's going to be where your power supply matches up with the motherboard, and uh, having that recess will allow you to actually plug that in and use it, which is, which is kind of cool. Uh, beyond that, we also have tons of uh, NVMe SSD support two U.2s over there, and then this M.2 cooler uh, unit here. Uh, it's got a shroud, it's got an active fan, and then there's an M.2 right here, and an M.2 vertically right here. The fan will actively cool both of those and channel the uh, hot air up and out of the I.O., and that will theoretically keep your M.2 SSDs cooler, which is important if you have a really fast one, like say a Samsung 960 Pro. When those get too hot, they start to uh, throttle themselves, so keeping them cool is a good idea. This one also comes with a really cool blank PCB setup here with some standoffs. So you can use this just to set it up uh, externally to an outside the box build, uh, set, up, set up a little testing workstation like, uh, like Kingpin does. And uh, I actually have one of these that I've had for a really long time that I got and I thought was special. But now people who get the uh, X299 dark board can get one of them as well. Moving along to the X299 for the Win K and check it out, EVGA has, has, is susceptible to RGB LEDs as well. This is their first RGB LED motherboard. Uh, they have RGB LED accents along the VRM uh, cooling solution up here, the I.O., the sound area down there, as well as the chipset. Uh, so that's kind of the most distinguishing feature of this motherboard, of course. But the four of the wind boards from EVGA uh, have a nice reputation. My X99 uh, classified motherboard from EVGA was, was uh, super stable, so I have to give them that uh, credit for sure. Also on here, uh, you got surface mounted power and reset buttons, debug LEDs. I should point out that that uh, is also available over here on the X299 dark board, although you get a double debug LED for that one. You can actually have that read out your, your CPU voltage. It's kind of interesting. Uh, and then finally, of course, the same type of connectivity for NVMe SSDs, a couple U.2s, a couple M.2s, uh, as well as an EATX form factor. So there's the X299 for the Win-K. And then finally, again, X299 in the micro-ATX form factor. EVGA, EVGA did this with X99 as well. They were kind of the first out of the gate with a micro-ATX board. So again, this one, you've only got uh, four DIMM slots, and it's a pretty basic design as far as connectivity and everything. You do have, again, surface mounted power and reset. You have a single U.2, you've got a single M.2, um, but overall, it looks like a nice clean board, and for anyone who's looking to drop X299 and an Intel Core X CPU, uh, Core X series CPU in a smaller form factor, 
there's a micro ATX motherboard available from EVGA. Let's move over to, to uh, GPUs because that's probably what EVGA is most known for. We've got the 1080 Ti Hydro Copper there on the right. We've got the new 1080 Ti Hybrid right here on the left. So this one includes custom PCB, uh, active air cooling on the fan for the VRMs and the power delivery, and then a liquid cooling solution with an integrated all-in-one 120 millimeter uh, fan and radiator for cooling the GPU and this has proven with a lot of their hybrid cards in the past to be an extremely effective solution for keeping that GPU temperature down and maintaining often higher boost clock speeds. Two 8-pin PCI Express power connectors on this one in case you guys are wondering. Now the 1080 Ti's are of course available in a wide variety of options from EVGA. These are the uh, SC2 on the right and the For the Win 3 on the left. And for the For the Win 3, EVGA is now offering its elite members, uh, which you can join that club by either being very active on the forums or owning a lot of EVGA cards or other things like that. But you can get different colored shrouds with these, and they showed us uh, several different options of those. Very colorful. So if you're doing a themed build with a specific color in mind, EVGA's got you covered. Unless you want purple. Where's the purple, EVGA? Everyone wants purple. All right, let's move on to the final card, the GTX 1080 Ti Kingpin. Absolute beast of a card. This one's, again, completely redesigned, PCB. Uh, this, you see a bunch of copper in there. It's not a complete copper uh, cooling solution in there, but they have copper plated a ton of the cooling uh, on the card. They also have a specialized uh, heat pipe that's on the base plate uh, to help keep the VRMs cool. It's got a specialized connector for voltage measurements. It has dual 8-pin uh, PCI Express graphics connectors, again, that are edge-mounted and right-angled, so help them keep your cable management clean. Uh, it's got a really cool design, and it also continues to feature ICX technology, which EVGA has been working on for, uh, well, for quite a while, but uh, we originally covered with the launch of their 1080 ICX, which means you have nine sensors scattered around the PCB to help measure things like uh, temperature on your VRMs so that you can actively cool different parts of the card, see how the card is performing, see where you might want to cool things down if necessary, and you can also have asynchronous fan control, so you can have one fan that spins up for the GPU and the other fans can be connected to the VRMs, just so you can have a more uh, intelligent cooling solution to keep things cool while also optimizing for sound generation, so things are both cool and quiet. EVGA is also guaranteeing that the GPUs that ship in the Kingpin cards are going to be able to overclock to 2025 megahertz, uh, which is pretty significant. They're doing that by binning the GPUs to make sure that whatever GPU you get in your Kingpin card will overclock like a beast. So that's pretty cool. Uh, once again, the GeForce GTX 1080 Ti Kingpin Edition with ICX technology from EVGA, as well as all of these EVGA parts. It's beastly, beastly parts. So guys, that's all for my coverage of EVGA's headquarters here in uh, New Taipei City. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, of course, hit the thumbs up button. And a huge thanks again to my sponsors for Computex 2017, EVGA, of course, as well as MSI, Tesoro, G-Skill, and Cooler Master. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you very soon with more coverage from Computex 2017.